Section 28. Steel Erection. Steel Erection. The references for this section include EM385, TAC1, TAC1, Section 28, 29 CFR 1926.700, Subpart Q, the Unified Facility Guide Specifications, and OSHA Fatal Facts. There were 142 fatalities in a three-year period related to steel erection. 83 falls and trips, 25 hit by objects, 12 electrocutions, six fatalities involving Christmas tree type lifts, 10 from collapsed steel, and six from lack of guard railing. A qualified person, one who by possession of a recognized degree, certification, or professional standing, or who has extensive knowledge, training, and experience has successfully demonstrated the ability to solve or resolve problems related to the subject matter, the work, or the project. A competent person is one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in the surrounding work environment or working conditions that are dangerous to personnel and who has the authority to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. Hazards associated in steel erection. Collapses while landing or placing a load. Most were the result of placing loads on unsecured or unbridged joists. Collapses while connecting joists or trusses. Most were the result of prematurely disconnecting the crane before the piece was secure. Workers struck by objects during miscellaneous activities. Most were the result of walking or working under a load. Workers being struck by objects and then falling. Most were the result of being struck while landing a load or making a connection, by a tool slipping or by a piece of decking being blown off of a pile when fall protection was not provided or used. General. The fall protection threshold height requirement is six feet for all work covered by this manual unless specified differently below, whether performed by government or contractor workforces, to include steel erection activities and systems engineered activities, prefabricated metal buildings. General, construction loads shall not be placed on structure or portions of a structure unless the employer determines based on information from a person who is qualified in structural design that the structure or portion of the structure is capable of supporting the loads. Employees shall not be permitted to work above or in positions exposed to protruding reinforcing steel, fasteners, or other impalement hazards unless provisions have been made to control the hazard. No employee shall be permitted to work under bundled material loads or other suspended loads. Riggers securing lowering loads to multi-lift rigging assemblies and workers setting suspended structural components such as beams, trusses, and precast members are excluded from this requirement. In these cases, work controls should be used to minimize the time spent directly under loads. Structural Steel Plan Prior to beginning the erection of any structural steel, a steel erection plan shall be submitted to the GDA for review and acceptance. The plan will include the identification of the site and project and will be signed and dated by the qualified person responsible for its preparation and modification. This plan shall include the following information as applicable to the particular project. The sequence of erection activity developed in coordination with the controlling contractor that includes the following. Material deliveries, material staging and storage, and coordination with other trades and construction activities. A description of crane and derrick selection and placement procedures, including the following. Site preparation, 
path for overhead loads, and identification of any lifts classified as critical lifts requiring separate plans. If load handling equipment other than crane or derrick, for example, all-terrain forklifts, powered industrial trucks, etc., are used, it must be used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. If load handling equipment is used with rigging, see Section 16. A description of steel erection activities and procedures, including the following. Stability considerations requiring temporary bracing and guying. Erection bridging terminus point. Anchor rod or anchor bolt. Notations regarding repair, replacement, and modifications. Columns and beams, including joists and purlins. Connections, decking, and ornamental and miscellaneous iron. A description of the fall protection procedures that will be used. A description of the procedures that will be used to comply with this section, including activity hazard analysis in accordance with section one of this manual, a certification for each employee who has received training for performing steel erection operations as required by 29 CFR 1926.761, a list of the qualified persons and competent persons, and a description of the procedures that will be utilized in the event of rescue or emergency response. Steel erection activities. Steel erection activities include hoisting, laying out, placing, connecting, welding, burning, guying, bracing, bolting, plumbing, and rigging structural steel, steel joists, and metal buildings. Installing metal decking, miscellaneous metals, ornamental iron, and similar materials, and moving point to point while performing the activities. Refer to 29 CFR 1926 0.750 B2 for a list of activities that are covered but may not normally be considered and that occur during and are a part of steel erection activities. Written notification. Written notifications. Before authorizing the commencement of steel erection, the controlling contractor shall ensure that the steel erector is provided with the following written notifications. The concrete in the footings, piers, and walls has attained on the basis of an appropriate ASTM standard test method of field cured samples, either 75% of the intended minimum compressive design strength or sufficient strength to support the loads imposed during steel erection. Any repairs, replacements, and modifications to the anchor bolts were conducted in accordance with the contract specification and or project structural engineer of record. A steel erection contractor shall not erect steel unless it has received written notification that the concrete in the footings, piers, and walls has attained on the basis of an appropriate ASTM standard test method of field cured samples within 75% of the intended minimum compressive design strength or sufficient strength to support the loads imposed during steel erection. Both steel and concrete contractors will keep a copy of this written notification on site. Site layout. The controlling contractor shall ensure that the following is provided and maintained. Adequate access roads into and through the site for the safe delivery and movement of derricks, cranes, trucks, other necessary equipment, and the material to be erected, and means and methods for pedestrian and vehicular control. An exception, this requirement does not apply to roads outside of the construction site. An adequately compacted, properly graded, drained area 
readily accessible to the work with adequate space for the safe storage of materials and the safe operation of the erector's equipment. Pre-planning of overhead hoisting operations. All hoisting operations in steel erection shall be pre-planned. This picture illustrates a neat proper layout of the steel to be used during the erection. Load handling equipment rigging. All the applicable requirements of sections 15 and section 16 shall apply to this section. Load handling equipment. If any deficiency is identified, an immediate determination shall be made by the competent person as to whether the deficiency constitutes a hazard. If the deficiency is determined to constitute a hazard, the load handling equipment shall be removed from service until the deficiency has been corrected. The operator shall be responsible for those operations under the operator's direct control. Whenever there is any doubt as to the safety, the operator shall have the authority to stop and refuse to handle loads until safety has been assured. A qualified rigger shall inspect the rigging prior to each shift. The headache ball, hook, or load shall not be used to transport people. Safety latches on hooks shall not be deactivated or made inoperable. Structural steel assembly. Structural stability shall be maintained at all times during the erection process. The permanent floors shall be installed as the erection of structural steel progresses and there shall not be more than eight stories between the erection floor and the uppermost permanent floor except where the structural integrity is maintained as a result of the design. At no time shall there be more than four floors or 48 feet, whichever is less, of unfinished bolting or welding above the foundation or uppermost permanently secured floor except where the structural integrity is maintained as a result of the design. Walking working surfaces. Tripping hazards, shear connectors such as headed steel studs, steel bars or steel lugs, reinforcing bars, deformed anchors or threaded studs shall not be attached to the top flanges of beams, joists, or beam attachments so that they project vertically from or horizontally across the top flange of the member until after the metal decking or other walking working surface has been installed. Column Anchorage. All columns shall be anchored by a minimum of four anchor rods or anchor bolts. Columns shall be set on level finished floors, pre-grouted leveling plates, leveling nuts, or shim packs which are adequate to transfer the construction loads. All columns shall be evaluated by a competent person to determine whether guying or bracing is needed. If guying or bracing is needed, it shall be installed. Anchor rods or anchor bolts shall not be repaired, replaced, or field modified without the approval of the project structural engineer of record. Prior to the erection of a column, the controlling contractor shall provide written notification to the steel erector if there has been any repair, replacement, or modification of the anchor rods or anchor bolts of the column. During the final placing of solid web structural members, the load shall not be released from the hoisting line until the members are secured with at least two bolts per connection. Diagonal bracing. Solid web structural members used as diagonal bracing shall be secured by at least one bolt per connection drawn up wrench tight 
or the equivalent as specified by the project structural engineer of record. Double connection. When two structural members on opposite sides of a column web or a beam web over a column are connected sharing common connection holes, at least one bolt with its wrench tight nut shall remain connected to the first member unless a shop attached or field attached seat or equivalent connection device is supplied with the member to secure the first member and prevent the column from being displaced. Systems Engineered Metal Buildings All of the requirements of Section 28 apply to the erection of systems engineered metal buildings except 28.B17, column anchorage, and 28.B23, open web steel joists. Each structural column shall be anchored by a minimum of four anchor rods or anchor bolts. Rigid frames shall have 50% of their bolts, or the number of bolts specified by the manufacturer, whichever is greater, installed and tightened on both sides of the web adjacent to each flange before the hoisting equipment is released. Construction loads shall not be placed on any structural steel framework unless such framework is safely bolted, welded, or otherwise adequately secured. Steel erection. Falling object protection. Securing loose items aloft. All material, equipment, and tools which are not in use while aloft shall be secured against accidental displacement. Protection from falling objects other than materials being hoisted shall be provided. The controlling contractor shall bar other construction processes below steel erection unless overhead protection for the employees below is provided. Controlled decking zones. The use of controlled decking zones is not permitted.